Hi YouTube, Darth here. The open beta for Star Wars Battlefront has begun and things are a lot different from the battlefield we know. In today's video I want to highlight how the blasters are specifically different and what that means for controlling your shots, recoil, and aiming. But first I want to give major props to the crew over at Simthic.com who tirelessly bring the community concrete usable data. Be sure to check them out if you haven't already after this video. Oh, and one more caveat, this is beta data, so everything might change later, so saith Lord Veda. So in the data that's been mined so far, we've got the lowdown for the five weapons in the open beta, and it's a very interesting read. It confirmed a number of suspicions that I've already had about how the blasters work. Those suspicions were that yes, blasters fall off in damage over distance, hipfire wasn't a penalty on most weapons, laying on the trigger didn't matter too much, and the average speed of the blaster laser itself was slower than most weapons in Battlefield. Let me break this down more directly. Weapon falloff is a thing, as it is in the Battlefield series. Weapons do more damage up front and do less damage at a distance. The E11 does the most damage up front and falls off to its minimum at 60 meters. The A280 has a similar drop off but less damage up front and a higher rate of fire. The DH-17 does the same damage as the A280 per blast but doesn't drop off until 25 meters and then falls off a cliff. The DLT-19 has a very interesting damage model doing 17 up front and only falling off to 15 like the other blaster rifles so pretty similar performance at all ranges. Finally, the Cycler Rifle does 90 damage at all ranges except in the case of a headshot which gets multiplied to fatal damage. As far as range is considered, the Beta Blasters do not do damage beyond 1500 meters which is pretty effectively unlimited range in the game. Their travel speed is 500 meters per second which is equivalent to the Carbine class of weapons in Battlefield 4. So not instant, but not particularly slow either. The Cycler Rifle is different with a 2700 meter range and a 900 meter per second speed. You'll note the blasters and the rifle have a maximum life of 3 seconds of travel time. In Star Wars Battlefront there is pretty much no hipfire penalty. The only weapons in the beta that have a hipfire penalty are the DH-17 and the Cycler Rifle. And this makes some sense as the DH-17 is a close range blaster pistol as opposed to a rifle and the Cycler Rifle is a high damage, one shot headshot sniper rifle that is meant to be aimed. The lack of hipfire really shouldn't come as a huge surprise in a game that revolves around action arcade third person play. Aimed fire slows the game down quite a bit from run and gun and having to switch to aimed mode pulls you out of the cinematic third person action. So what does this mean for you as a player? You can pretty much ignore aiming at enemies using aiming down sights as for most weapons it's not going to get you any advantage other than a slight zoom. The Cycler Rifle and the DH-17 Blaster Pistol are the two exceptions. For those you'll want to stop and shoot. Next, the game has a very slow spread increase per shot and much faster spread decrease. What does that mean? Each shot you take increases how far your next shot deviates from your aim, but in Star Wars Battlefront that amount is very small. Compared to Battlefield 4, depending on the blaster, it can be as low as a third as much. Probably as a nod to the movies, the Imperial E11 has the second worst spread of the beta rifles, meaning it becomes the most inaccurate with sustained fire. However, to offset this, all the weapons have extremely fast spread decrease. This means that when you stop shooting, your aim quickly resets back to its expected position. In general, this is 2-3 times faster in Battlefront than in Battlefield 4. So what does this mean for you as a player? Pretty much light it up with the DLT-19 and A280 at close range. The E11 and DH-17 could use a little more pause between bursts, but a very brief one and this is really only going to come into play mostly at long range. Next, I want to talk about firing on the move penalties. For those not in the know, the firing on the move penalty increases the spread of your shot when you're on the move. In Star Wars Battlefront, the penalties are tied to the same weapons as hip fire, so only the DH-17 and Cycler Rifle are affected. Again, what does this mean? For specifically the DH-17 and Cycler Rifle, you'll want to stand still to get a better shot. For every other weapon, bob and weave to your heart's content and as long as you can still land your shot, it's not going to make a difference under the hood. Again, this makes sense in the context of an action arcade third person shooter. Now all the weapons do have recoil values. They each have recoil up, left and right, and in varying amounts that are more typical of the weapons in the Battlefield series. For those of you not familiar with Battlefield, these values mean how much the weapon kicks in any given direction when it's fired. Overall, it's generally about half as strong as Battlefield 4, but each weapon does have its own characteristics of how it fires. For example, the DLT-19 has a very strong left-right recoil, meaning that prolonged bursts are going to become increasingly horizontally spread from the target. In general, the upwards recoil is very very weak, meaning the console experience is likely not going to be very different from the PC experience as far as controlling the vertical traversal of your aim. 
For Battlefield veterans, it's worth noting that there is no first shot recoil in the game, so there is also no recoil detriment to tap firing your weapons. And finally, unlike the launch of Battlefield 4 and Battlefield Hardline, there is no visual recoil. Your sights are aimed true and do not rattle and animate lies and deceit. If you're not familiar with visual recoil, it was an animated motion and aimed fire that shipped with the last two Battlefield titles. It has since been removed from BF4 and I believe Hardline as well. May it burn in hell. So overall, these blaster mechanics should come as no surprise to anybody playing Battlefront. The game seems to be aimed squarely at arcade-style mechanics and the difficulty of aiming and firing is vastly reduced from its technological predecessors in Battlefield. Some weapons have specific characteristics and there is value in tap fire for controlling both spread and heat, but not a particularly huge amount, especially at close range. That's it for this video on blaster mechanics in Battlefront. What do you think of the way Battlefront handles aiming, recoil, and blaster mechanics? How do you think this is going to change up your game, and is this a good thing? Be sure to let me know in the comments below. If you're new around here, please check out my channel and consider subscribing. We've seen the first day of the open beta, and I'm going to be dropping new videos from Battlefront through Monday. Once the beta is over, I'll be switching back to Battlefield until the release date of Battlefront on November the 17th. From there, I'll be mixing it up. Until then, just be patient, the Battlefield videos will come again. If you have something you'd like me to cover during the beta, be sure to hit me up in the comments below. As always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time, YouTube.